Welcome to Hello Monday, where Rachel talks all things ballet and fitness, sharing strategies and techniques to help you start, grow, and create a thriving business using your passion for ballet and fitness. And here's your host, Rachel Withers. Hi there, I'm Rachel Withers. I'm the founder and CEO of Ballet Be Fit, and welcome to my weekly live stream, Hello Monday, which is 7 p.m. every Monday, where we're talking all about ballet, we're talking all about fitness, and we'll be sharing strategies, tips, and techniques on how you can really grow your fitness business and really build a thriving and profitable business using your passion for ballet and fitness. Well, tonight I have a guest with me. I have a guest, uh, Richard Playfair, with me. He is an expert on fitness video production and he is the founder and CEO of Sweat Life Films. So I'm going to be introducing Richard right now to us but as always please say hello in the comments box, tell me what you want to know, um, we'll be asking Richard lots of questions so it'd be great for you to give your feedback, ask your questions and so I'm just going to move so I can see to the comments so I can see everybody and hi welcome and I'm now going to um, uh, welcome Richard to the live stream. So hi Richard, good to have you here. Um, as I say you are an expert on fitness video production. You're the CEO of Sweat Life Films. And so it'd be just really lovely to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, background, and then we'll kind of crack on a bit more. Sure, thanks sure, for thanks having for me on the show. I'll do my, my best to zoom through it quickly so <laughs> I can uh, get to delivering some value to your audience and help them with their uh, video questions. So yeah. I moved to London in 2001 and started working for a TV production company okay. in 2005. I moved out of television to the new emerging platform of mobile for, for video and yeah. TV broadcast. Yeah. And I worked in that industry for about, well, 2005 to 2008. And in that time, I used to go to the gym a lot. I love training and <laughs> yeah. changing career. So right okay. yeah it's alongside that job I, I trained to be a group exercise instructor so I right. did exercise and les mills and those sort of and all, programs, yeah yeah as well as the freestyle sort of stuff yeah and um left to do that full time and in the meantime became a personal trainer right and then, as you know working in this industry with clients clients talk when you're training them and they do the indeed time, <laughs> yeah a lot of the they time do. My uh, my boss wants me to do this video, and I've got to hire someone. I don't know how to do it, and blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, I can yeah, do that. So I started yeah. my clients with video, not for fitness, but you know, for whatever business. Right. So you started kind of doing videos for uh, different different clients. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, business, finance, banking, little shops, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then thought, you know what? There's something in this here. I could combine you know fitness maybe with video and it was then soon after that i was contacted by les mills and uh, right. started to create some content for them and then the same year picked up uh beach body when they came over to the uk yes um, yeah. then i did some work for fit pro uk active and the ball started rolling and then i never looked back just kept going with that and then um from 2015 moved into producing on-demand fitness videos and it's just got bigger and bigger since so that's what I've continued to do no oh, it's that's fantastic and obviously you've got an absolute wealth of experience there and you've worked with some incredible absolutely incredible brands and it is so nice isn't it and I think I think this is the thing for all of us that when you can actually combine your passion for something such as fitness which clearly um you had a you know a passion for that, and then the video at the same time. That's that's exceptionally um, rewarding, and I think that's what we find here with uh, the the people that are in this this group is that they're wanting really to pursue their passion, which is ballet and fitness, and really deliver and understand how to deliver something that actually is profitable and is really getting them out there. So it's 
absolutely fantastic really to have you here tonight so that you can really share some of your expert advice on what we can do to really deliver um, online effectively and obviously if we choose to uh, on demand as well and I'll just say hello Sarah good to have you here here tonight glad you're joining us and if anybody's got any questions please just pop them in the comments box always want to know what you need to know so obviously you kind of shared with us how you got started with um, video production right now how are you finding everything since we're now back in lockdown again has how has it had an impact on your business and obviously the clients that you're working with and how are you, you know, how are you finding everything at the start of lockdown i i thought the phone was going to be ringing off the hook people were right. going to be like, i need work we need to do this we're going to lockdown we've got no content <laughs> blah, blah. and the phone was silent not a single call at all and that became clear once I started to listen to what was happening in the industry. And people were, they had finally had the opportunity to jump on things like Zoom, Facebook yeah. Live, Instagram, and they were forced to adopt these platforms to start creating content. And that's why the phone didn't ring. You know, no one called, no one wanted it. <laughs> yeah. And I was a bit like, oh, crikey, come on, seriously, I'm gonna get some yeah. work out of this. Yeah. And, um, and so it was clear that there wasn't any need for me at that point. I, I couldn't intersect. I couldn't do any work and anyway. we couldn't go out and film. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. So for about three months, well, within the first couple of weeks of lockdown, I thought, well, maybe I can help here in yeah. some way and maybe it will lead to some more business further down the line. So yeah. I set up this Facebook group, which was called Video Production Help, Fitness Video Production Help. Okay, and we're going to put that in our comments box for you. So um, I think I've got Joanna, a member of the team here tonight. So Joanna, please make sure that you pop uh, Richard's uh, Facebook group into the comments box so everybody can see it, so they know where to go to get uh, really some great advice from him. So yeah, please carry on, sorry. <laughs> Just So I spent pretty much every night, every other night um, on this platform giving free training, talking about marketing advice, talking about video production help, getting yeah. people up to speed on Zoom. And I'll be brutally honest here, I hadn't used Zoom a lot before right. that. And well, so no. Yeah, it's because it it's... a platform which yeah. was completely unfamiliar to me as well. But being in this industry, I, you know, technologically minded. Yeah, you I can... pick things up, you know, and um, to the degree where I could teach other people how to use it and help them overcome problems. So it's that platform really bore out of, you know, live streaming. Everyone wanted to get online. They needed the help to do it. And they needed the reassurance, the support, a little bit of strategy to help them get their, you know, head around what they needed to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, bit by bit, day by day, Trip fed more information in there to help people. And the, the feedback's been excellent, overwhelming since then. I've done one-to-one uh, -one consultations for people. I've been to help people set up studios. Um, so yeah, it really took off. And now we're in lockdown two. Um, fortunately yeah. enough, towards the end of lockdown one, <laughs> we did do some filming and we had some production. So I'm tied it over. I'm busy now until January. Yeah, that's... Um, and that's a lot with existing clients and some new clients that have come on board as well. Yeah. Um, but the group's still continuing and that's still taking up a large proportion of my time answering questions Excellent. as i'm sure you know as the yeah, you know, you can, heading yeah. up a group heading a up thing. a group is so my instructors they're they're really now having to deliver through zoom um because obviously clearly we can't go in studio can you sort of share some key tips that they can do for setup i know i know they sometimes have you know they want to know about mics they want to know about lighting where to, do you put your lighting in front do you put it behind do you need natural light all those sort of things what what should they be thinking about so lighting buy as much as you can and point it at you so from the direction of your camera point it at you you're illuminating yourself to be yep. filmed and the benefit of that is the more light that you have on you the harder or the easier it is for your camera to do its work right so that so it doesn't matter whether it's a webcam a little action cam that i got right up here a dslr a professional video camera they all need light to perform the best so don't be afraid don't be afraid of it get as much <laughs> as you can and stick it at you 
And when you think it's too much, that's probably still not enough, right? So you yeah. need to really stack up the light on you. Stick everything on in the house if you can. Now, one other word I should mention about light is that if you notice things start turning different colors, um, like your wall should be white, but it looks a bit blue and you yeah. know, your skin looks a bit red when it should be a, not so red. Yes. This is all together with, um, this is all to do with color temperature, right? You know, right, your, okay. your house, you, you've always got different lights on and some yeah. of them have different temperatures. Some yeah. of them are more yellow, some of them are more white, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So if you're having color problems, try and use the same bulbs in your lights, like the same temperature bulbs. Right, okay. Right? So, yeah, so sometimes you have like a warm bulb or a cool one, try and use the same the same types. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you'll notice that even if you're filming in the middle of the day sometimes because a window is open on one side of you, and then you're lighting, you know, your house lights from another side of you, you'll have a difference in colors there as well. And there's not a great deal you can do about that because mm. the sun is very powerful and that's a specific yeah. temperature yeah. and your house lights are a different temperature. So yeah. I don't say too much about light, but that's something to watch out for if you're looking to improve the colors, which you might want to do. Sound wise, invest in a microphone. You know, right. invest in a, in a lapel mic that clips onto you or a head mic that you can wear. Um, more people will switch off your video because of bad audio than bad picture. Yeah. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. make sure your audio is on point. It's an investment, right? And a lot of the mics that I've been recommending to my audience is one by Rode. It's called the Rode Wireless Go. It's about okay. 100 it's about 150 to 170 right pounds, right yeah. so it's an investment yes but don't worry because if you buy this and then you never use it again or you realize it's not for you you can sell it people yeah. will buy it right you may lose 30 quid right but if you've used it for two or three weeks before you sell it that's only cost you 10 quid a week yeah. you can't hire it for less than that no right? so you can sell it um same with lights you know if you want to invest in some cheap video lights, get a pair for 50 quid, 100 pounds. Yeah. Don't want it anymore, just sell it. People will buy it. Yeah, okay. And a question I have though, obviously because we're doing a lot of movement um, when we're taking the classes, can you get a wireless mic? Well, is that, because obviously concerned about kind of wires tripping over, that type of thing. Is there anything you can recommend there at all? Absolutely, yeah. So the the Rode Wireless Go is actually a wireless mic. Ah, excellent. It's, it's a, I haven't got one right here with me, but I've got something very similar. So where is it? This is like <laughs> an SD card reader. Don't worry. Right, okay. It's about, it's about mm, two-thirds the size of this, you know, in terms right. of length. It's a square. Yeah. So it's this big by this big. And that sits on, you can clip it to you right here. It's yeah. got a mic built into it. And the other one plugs into your computer or plugs into your camera or plugs into your phone or your tablet. Uh, so you don't you don't have any wires on you. It's light. It's made out of plastic. You will forget you're wearing it. So it's a really inexpensive and high quality way to improve your audio and maximize your audience experience. And that's what it's all about when you're doing classes is you're trying to create the best experience you can, because that's the thing that's going to keep them coming back. Definitely. And. Um, I'll just say Kelly says hi and uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. She, uh, getting some great tips. Lovely to have you, Kelly. Um, glad you're enjoying it. Also, another difficulty our instructors have is that obviously they're using the mic, but at the same time, they've got to play music. How do you tend to balance, sort of balance that out? It is complicated. Once you start to throw music into the mix, yeah, <laughs> and you've got your voice, and mm. then you've got the music playing, yeah, it means you have to step up the technical complexity of whatever you're doing to make right. it work, right? So the easiest way to deliver live sessions is not to use music at all, if you can get away with it, right? Right. But I know, I understand that with dance and with ballet and stuff, it's important, not only yeah. important for the atmosphere, but it's also important for timing as well, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. it is. And it creates um, the light and shade within the movement that we do. So music is so, and I know most of our kind of uh, clients, attendees, part of the whole experience for them is definitely the music uh, as well. So, yeah. 
<laughs> so when you're using music and a mic, you've got to blend these two sources together. You got right. to mix them so then it goes into your feed to go out, right? Yeah. And I'm sure your audience are familiar with mixers, like little devices where you can alter the levels of and stuff like that. I don't I don't know whether they whether they are. I'll um ask the question. Does any of them uh hey guys, any of you using mixers? I've got um and because we're going through StreamYard, I can't see who this uh who you are, but um they're using um hey hey mic for their um sound i don't know whether you know what uh that one uh is rich uh, yeah it's a bluetooth lapel mic yeah so and is that is that a good one to a good one to use is uh saying it works well um for you sorry i haven't got your name because obviously we're going through Streamyard. sorry about that um i've got another question um as well would you recommend an h D camera and that's from Joe um, so I don't, uh, what's your thoughts on that um, Richard? Pretty much every camera produced nowadays is HD it's called high definition yeah and to avoid getting too techy that means 1920 by 1080 pixels so 1920 pixels along the bottom 1080 pixels high so your traditional television screen or your computer monitor just bought around the corner from Curry's will be an HD screen nowadays and all right. cameras produced within the last probably five years yeah. should all be HD as well. Um, so yes, I think you I think you'd struggle to buy a camera new that isn't HD nowadays. So, so you'll that, maximize your quality by having a HD camera. That's that's good to know. So we've got here at the moment that um, Cherry would love to use a mixer, but she says that expensive is there anything that you can recommend that isn't too expensive for uh for, as a as a mixer you can buy mixers from about 50 pounds up to several thousand if you want to <laughs> but because you're only taking in two sources which is music yeah and a microphone you can have a very small mixer which will allow you to do that and then out of that mixer you take it into your computer or you take it directly into your camera you must be prepared, if you want to do this, to invest a little bit of money. Fifty pounds isn't a lot. It might be right now if you've not worked for a while and income. Yeah, has been low, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I appreciate that. But if you're sitting on the fence and fifty pounds is stopping you from earning your wage for a, for a month, right? Think of it like an investment. Right. Definitely. Um, you do need to. You know, it's you invest if you think about it. Uh, the guys invest in the training with me; they're investing in that time, so they need need to think of it as a as a part of the business, part of like they look for the best studio venue that they can find, whether they're in the studio. It is exactly the same thing. Thinking about the experience that they're going to give their participants, their attendees. So making that investment is is really important because. It'll enable them to scale the business more effectively uh, in the end, definitely. Absolutely. I mean, it's a necessity right now, right? If you don't buy it, you're stuck and you can't go anywhere. So it has to be an investment. And like I say, if we all come out of this in a couple of weeks time, and we realize that everyone's had COVID since the 1800s. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just uh, emerged again now. Then guess what? You can sell it. Someone will buy it. Don't worry about it. You know, if you lose half the money on it, you've only spent 25 quid in the mixer. So yeah. don't let things like that hold you back. Stick it on the credit card or, you know, call up Auntie Doris because she forgot your birthday and remind her that she <laughs> didn't put a check in the post. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. it is important to, you do need to always invest. Um, you do need to invest in your business and just say hi to Louise. Thank you for joining us too. Good to, good to, good to have you here. Do you think, that um online virtual kind of the streaming that we're doing is is here to stay really um what's your thoughts on it absolutely and i can understand if you know anything about me that it, i might be prone to having more of a biased opinion to the future of virtual fitness favoring okay. on demand because yeah. pretty much that's what i do yeah but believe it or not the future of fitness online is is a combination of of live stream and on-demand workouts um, and using live stream 
as the superpower that it is, which helps to build connection, community, or um, uh, it makes sure that people are um, staying up to date and being um, yeah, it does uh, accountable for sticking yeah. to your programs. And it stuff really, and I think it, it definitely helps for uh, we find really for that sense of community um, and the accountability. Um, and the reason we we like Zoom as one of uh, the methods of delivery for uh, the virtual classes that instructors do is the fact that it's so it's so nice because it's so two way two way and you can you know you can have a large number of attendees at the same time and engage and you've got your little emojis and everything that you can kind of do so it's it's really it is good that way isn't it so um, yeah the I mean the future of fitness rather looking at it as a as a as a whole industry because i think it's i think it's wrong to do it that way because the industry has so many different ways it's made up different services yeah. so the future comes down to an individual strategy right so the individual strategy is a combination of live stream and it's a combination of on demand for a couple of reasons as we've already mentioned community accountability um, it, and, and having that connection, especially while we still can't meet people, is so important, right? But the on-demand side of things is also important to maximize use of your time, to maximize profitability, and to use the superpower of the internet that it is for automation. So yeah. if I contextualize this a little bit so it makes yeah, a bit please. more sense. Yeah. Recent statistics have come out that people are only watching videos once or twice, the very most. So if you do a workout today, the people who watch that today will watch it once, but they might not come back and ever do it again. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you make that an on-demand video or not, people are only going to see it 1.2, 1.5 times apparently on average. So right. You've got, okay. yourself, you've got to ask yourself why. Why? Yeah aren't people watching it more than once or well, there's a couple of reasons if you're putting a, a new video out every day why would anybody want to go back into your archives and do something that was two or three days old they just wait for the new one right yeah they're just going to want yeah the next thing aren't they yeah yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. it's kind of like that fomo thing oh, i don't i want to be up to date i want to have the latest yeah. one I, I don't want to yeah. a couple of days ago right so mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense and then if you think about the way that people are delivering content nowadays, so if they're delivering a live stream through Zoom to live participants, when you play that back as, a, as an on-demand video, you realize it was done live. So you don't get that same connection that you had before. It doesn't feel quite right. No, if it's... You're talking, if you're talking down the camera to your participants, you know, and you're saying, hey, Judy, you're doing really well. <laughs> yeah, and then, Judy's not there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, takes, it, it takes the participant following it in their own time on demand out of that experience because it makes them realize again, this is not live and I'm not, I wasn't there. So they've missed out on the opportunity for that yeah. engagement. So all of a sudden they're starting to feel a bit, mm, right? Compare yeah. that with on demand. You deliver on demand in a way that you know no one's watching live. Yes, so you, you do. deliver in a way that's supposed to be evergreen, right? So it yeah. doesn't matter whether people do it again or whether they're doing it for the first time. It feels the same, right? And yeah. as you know, with the way that you coach the people, that connection and the way you talk, the language that you use, the tense that you use, the projection, the pitch, all of yeah. that sort of stuff matters, right? It so, does. It absolutely matters. Yeah. And and there has to be that connection from the live scenario that 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 works on. So remove that live connection and it becomes disjointed. Right. So that's kind of another reason why people don't tend to go back to watch stuff that's already been live. Right. So we're limiting the opportunities for people to watch that workout again. And then you're going to look at music licensing. Some places allow you to use music, but then they, they say take it down within 48 yes. hours. Zumba, I think, have still got this problem that yeah. they allow their instructors to have it up for two days and then they have to take and it down. And then they take it down. Yeah. So no one's going to watch your workout after two days. No. Right? No. So there are no. these issues that get in the way. And live stream is not perfect, but on demand is not perfect either. So the strategy that you take has to come down to what makes business sense for me. And you have to start asking your audience 
How many workouts are you doing each week? Are you doing my live workouts? No. How many are you doing? How many do you want? Right? Because if you're burning yourself out, which people are, because I hear yeah, doing all day, hours of lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, two yeah. lives a day, and yeah. one person is watching it, and no one's watching your replays. Why are you burning yourself out doing seven a day? Right? Way back in March, I talked about um, a formula which um, allows people to deliver the best combination of live and on-demand workouts. Yeah. And it's one live for every three on-demand, right? right. So, so that means that you can be at home on a Saturday. You could film one live. Then you'd film three others, yeah. you know, and then keep those in the bank for when you're sick, when you're ill, when you're injured, when you need to take Dorothy to the hospital <laughs> again because she twisted the knee, you know, all, you've got to think in terms of what happens if something goes wrong and I can't do a live, right? Because the last thing you want is people to start going off and looking for another solution. Because No, you don't. Right. You, you have to, in, in this industry, the one thing you have to be is consistent. That, yeah. is, that is so important. We're teaching, uh, we're, we're instructing for accountability and being consistent in your training. So you can't, as an instructor, be inconsistent so it is so important um when you're delivering um or when you're uh, recording videoing and on demand how would would how would you kind of do the setup would you do it as you've said you're not delivering it as a live class it wouldn't be the same way yes you've still got to do all the kind of the pitch tone light shade everything that you need to do encouragement as you would a live is there any kind of um production techniques that uh our instructors should should think about well there are kind of three there are kind of three pillars to designing any content whether it's virtual whether it's on demand so your product's important you know what the program is you're delivering and why you're delivering it the second thing is the production value we spoke a little bit about that light and camera yeah. and stuff yeah and then the third the third stage is is your promotion you know how are you going to get that content out there so those are kind of the three pillars that everyone should work on in the virtual space there's not any specific technical production tips but the most important one is the way that you present right yeah. so you, i know you've done a podcast on presentation before because i've listened to it and so you know when you're online you have to adapt a little bit more to the way that you talk because you have to project more People yes. have to be able to hear you, right? But you can you can talk. It's a skill, but you can talk more calmly without shouting, but still be heard, right? Yeah. Being a master of your voice is so important when you're teaching virtually. You know, it's so easy to get pulled into the trap and to start whispering because it's a calm moment. It's like, no, people can't hear you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. don't forget, people can always turn you down. If you're too loud, people can whack down the <laughs> yeah. volume, right? Turn you down. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so power and projection is important. And strangely enough, all of the words associated with the way that you use your voice tend to, be, tend to begin with a P. So your pitch and your projection. And yeah. the one that I want to pick up on here is, is your tense. So the present tense, right? Yeah. You want to keep people in the moment and in the workout. You need to stop saying what we're going to do next is. We don't need to know that. They're just, they're watching you. They're following you. In the moment. You lead yeah. them to it. You know, it, it's literally as now take your feet wide, plie position, knees over toes. Plie, well done. Yeah. <laughs> I, filmed, I filmed a ballet course. I know all about it. I can't do around the world or, or third position. My oh, can't are. you? Oh, you'll have to Probably. do one of our courses, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you can teach it. <laughs> so it's an easy skill that gets forgotten, right? And mm. now when you're not in front of people in the same room, it's a really good opportunity for you to flick back to your notes and to revisit the way that you coach again, because there's this real fear of silence. People talk a lot online. You gotta let it breathe. You gotta let the, the cue land. Let yeah. the music breathe. Mm. Right? And that all adds to that audience experience. And those small things that seem like a big deal to you, because I'm not talking the silence. I need to fill it somehow. But when you let it land and you met, let the space open up and allow people to resonate with the music, 
Absolutely. It creates such a different impact that you've forgotten because you haven't been in the studio for so long. I think I think that is um, so true because uh, when you just allow the the to be focused on the movement and and with the music and you're allowing your attendees to have that time to to actually work work that out rather than instructing it bringing in another cue and something else to 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 think about you've not allowed uh, the time to enjoy that uh, physicality right in that very moment and i think that that is something um so it's so important and uh, thank you for sharing that one because for me um the whole thing of what we do is really want to uh enable our attendees to really feel the moment feel the movement and and get that enjoyment and that you know the the real um positivity endorphins going through through being present with where they are rather than thinking oh god i've got to think about the next the next thing that's going to happen so that's I, that's thank you for sharing that one because that is so that is so um very very important yeah uh, a, a good exercise to do with this and and if you're watching this now this is the challenge i'm going to set for you the first challenge of probably <laughs> a couple next time you present your live session i don't want you to do i don't want you to say anything until you've thought it in your head first in its entirety so if you're getting someone into a specific position they're already you know, they were already in the position before. Now you're thinking, right, what am I going to get them to do next? I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. Okay. And then you say it. And then you don't say anything else until you've worked out the next sentence in your head. And what you start to do is, is pace your communication. Definitely. And it starts to slow you down. And then you start to feel more comfortable with it because you can pe see people responding. And you've got to give them the opportunity to do that because of lag, right? There could be like one or two seconds lag that they experience before they actually hear what you told them to do. Yeah. So give them that opportunity. Pace yourself, think it, then say it. Definitely. Um, I couldn't I couldn't agree more with that. And we encourage to really think about the, the cues that you're going to be delivering. And when you're doing your lesson plan, think about what that cue is. Think about um, how you're going to... Uh, say it and don't um you know don't put too many words in there make it clear make it concise so that it can be heard and it can be understood you might have to change the cue technique or, or change the words because some people uh, receive uh cues slightly differently but it really is important to be very concise and clear and i think pace thinking exactly what you're going to say before you say it is is clearly uh, important we've got another um uh, and i can't see your name again because we threw Streamyard. you love your dance aerobic classes on zoom you're absolutely loving them i'm glad they're going uh, really really well for you um please um just share your name with us so we can say say hello um so in terms of online classes in terms of live online classes in terms of on demand um you've you've gone into a little bit of how to sort of structure your on demand and your life in a, in a typical week uh are we saying how many live classes should somebody be doing and how many kind of banking up and online and and how should they deliver those on demand classes is there a platform that they can use to deliver on-demand classes, what would you recommend? There are loads of platforms that have recently emerged which allow you to deliver on-demand classes. Um, I'm good uh, friends with a couple of people who have their own platforms and I'm um, doing some work <laughs> with them at the moment to help hopefully do some collaborations. Yeah. So um, Fitu or Fitune, which is based here in the UK, yeah. Platform which allows you to deliver stream classes as well as on demand through a, um, its own signature platform on Podio as well. Then there are others like um, Gym Catch and Punch Pass and yeah. 
um, I forget the other ones now off the top of my head. Um, Bookwen is another. And a lot of them have ad adapted to delivering um, fitness content or they're at least promoting some of their market towards this industry yeah. because it's <laughs> so widely apparent now it's been affected by what's going on. Yeah. My, my, my um, tip with choosing a platform is to really understand who your audience are and where they're consuming your content, right? So yeah. um, the majority of people are on Facebook. And if that is your chosen way of delivering and you want to monetize, then it might be a very manual job of doing it. You know, you send out a PayPal link, people subscribe every week or every month. Yeah. Yeah. And then you provide them with manual access to the group and deliver your content through there. Yeah. Um, whereas others might be you just direct them straight to your you know, third party site like Fitchu. Um, so what platform you choose really determines the success of your product. If you get it right, because you understand your audience, then you'll be in the best position you can. So you really yeah. need to look at your audience, you're profiling your audience, you're understanding where they're spending their time to make sure you make it as effortless as possible. This doesn't come down to going, this platform is $8.99 and this is $7.99. It's a pound cheaper. I'm going with that one because it might be the wrong platform. So for the sake of one pound, you've made it 10 times more difficult for your audience to use it because they just don't associate themselves with that way of delivering or consuming content. Yeah. One of the hardest populations to reach at the moment are the older generation. Yeah. You know, We're looking at the baby boomers slightly plus because they're not particularly tech savvy. They don't have Facebook accounts, or a lot of them don't. You know, Zoom is probably a stretch too far. And although some people can do it, if your yeah. audience is primarily that demographic, you've got, you've got a really challenging job to get your content in front of them. It's not easy. And I don't have the answers for that. But you do by asking your audience what yes. they want and how they can get your content best. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our um, instructors, that they kind of communicate through uh, WhatsApp, that type of thing. And sometimes they'll send, you know, little uh, video clips of um, technique techniques through WhatsApp to a lot of their, uh, their clients because they find that that's something that they find particularly easy as a, as a method to, to deliver through. Because it isn't easy. Uh, understanding for the first time zoom or whatever platform it is going through the key is to find something that's as user friendly as i think as possible isn't it for whatever your audience demographic uh, is really um i think that that is and, and this online you know we could go into online booking systems and there's another thing linking up your online booking system to your zoom and <laughs> you could the list is it is endless, really, isn't it? You know, so. absolutely. And, and finding the best solution for your audience and then minimizing your technical entanglement. Right. Don't yeah. try and focus on trying to bodge this together with this because someone said you could do it. For the days that it takes you to get it sorted, you could pay two or three pounds more and it's all done straight yeah. away. Right. We said it at the start with the mixes. It's an investment. Every tool that you use, whether it's a platform, whether it's a piece of technology, whether it's a course, whether it's education, these are all investments in what you do. The new game is part digital. So you've got to be prepared to spend a bit of money to start doing it a professional way. Because if you're not in for it for the long game and you're not going to invest, you should probably get out right now. That's harsh words, yes. but it's true. <laughs> And I'm not saying you need to spend thousands of pounds on video production. I'm saying that instead of buying those Lulu lemon leggings for 90 quid, <laughs> don't buy a mixer instead, <laughs> put 40 yeah. quid on the credit card and get that mic in the post, yeah. right? Yeah. And then yeah, and no, it is. And I think you have to think about your setup and you and be professional and think about investing that because if you don't take it seriously, if you don't look professional, how are the people that are coming to your classes going to think that you take them seriously with what you're delivering? Because we're leading by example. Uh, you, you want to look smart, professional, 
and it's exactly the same with whatever software that you're using it it has to be that you have to lead by example and show that you respect your clients enough to deliver something through the best uh software platform whatever that may that may be um and so you said something there with looking smart which actually is important um and i didn't mention earlier in the production uh tips that if you can try not to wear too much black yes okay? because, like, <laughs> <laughs> but you've got black on have you not <laughs> i've got a black seat and everything. yeah so, when, when you're doing exercise, it's very difficult to perceive depth when everything is black. So if you're wearing black leggings and a black top and your mat is black and the back of your room is dark, when people are trying to mirror you successfully and success is determined their um, audience experience, right? Yes. They want to be able to see what they're doing clearly. And if you're wearing all black, your leggings are all black, it's very difficult for people to mirror it well. They can't really tell how far your leg is back. They can't tell whether your knee alignment is good. Yeah. So be conscious of the clothes that you wear and the Definitely. environment that you're in. So people can see your limb movements clearly. And that will provide them with a better experience rather than going, I'm confused. I can't tell where her knee is. Or And it is. And it's wearing, you know, uh, clothes that are relatively fitting as well, not restrictive, that are fitting so that... Uh, they can see the alignment when you're doing your demonstrations because if you're wearing big baggy things <laughs> then, then, you know it's it's really hard to see especially uh when you're online so it's really good to have not black guys not like we're wearing you know something a little bit lighter and no we're not teaching right now <laughs> no and um, yeah but uh it is it is important and hi donnie it's lovely to have you here uh tonight joining us so what opportunities do you think right now in where we are is for um really uh fitness professionals so that they can kind of really keep connected uh with with their audience do you think there's any kind of new opportunities coming in through online video work that uh they should be uh kind of thinking about for the future how do you think your audience would like to earn about 300 pounds a day doing what they love i think they would like that very 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 much because that's the reality we're in right now that brands are out there and i know because i'm contacted regularly by yeah people in India, China, Australia, you name it, that they're looking for talent, real people to deliver real workouts on on-demand programs or live stream or whatever it happens to be yes. to people who are talented like you. So for all of those years that you felt undervalued working in those clubs where you get paid 25 pounds an hour, yeah. when they cancel the class, you don't get paid anything. Mm -hmm. The new reality is, if you are prepared to put yourself in a position of authority now to build your personal brand, to start investing in your business, to make your storefront look professional, I would be quite happy to pay you 300 pounds a day to come and deliver a program for me. That's the reality yeah. we're in. It is. And I can say I stream uh, in Brazil on demand. I have an on demand uh, workout that's streamed in Brazil and you know, I'm dubbed in Portuguese. And uh, that, that, there it is. And that's it's pre-recorded. It goes there. Uh, and that's exactly uh, what it is. And, and that's really what what you're sort of saying, isn't it, really? Exactly. Yeah. And, the, yeah, and the second thing is, if you're not like brands are looking for talent. Yeah. Right. We're not talking about you know, the picture poster girls of five or 10 years ago that used to represent no. this industry. It's not no. like that anymore. No. Right? Because we're so much more connected to different audiences who want different things. And marketing matters. And doing your marketing in the right way determines the success, the success of a product or brand or whatever it's going to be, right? So the second thing is licensing content, right? So you as an outsourcing your content to them, you could create your own on-demand workouts and license them to a third-party app, to an, a content aggregator, or actually put it, distribute it through other platforms yeah. and earn revenue that way as well, right? So 
there's two ways that you can start earning more money from what you're doing and you're complete control of your own destiny here it yeah. requires you to start figuring out what you want to do so how do you get into a position where you can start to do this stuff right how do you find this type of work and what do you need to put in place that puts you in the best position to take advantage of them and the first one because you are a creator right you are a fitness creator you design your own workouts you design your own choreography you create your own programs your own courses you are a fitness creator okay start to understand that that's a new phrase that people in this industry are going to be referred to as fitness creator yeah you have to represent yourself in the same way that all creatives do you need to have a show reel of all your best content you need to have yeah. visual examples of you talking about things introducing things you know um, becoming an authority in a certain space you need to start creating this collateral around you right so if you don't have a video on your website which says hi i'm susan or hi i'm jeff and i and i i specialize in this because i want to help these people who do this you need to start putting that easy to reach easy to find content out there you definitely do and you de i the, i think one of the most important things is also to be you in this you are unique you will deliver your uh workouts differently even uh, the instructors that are delivering my ballet uh, fit method they all deliver it differently they're going to different um demographics different audiences and what it is all about is being you and showing your audience who you are what your message is what your ethos is, what it is you believe in, and that will engage your audience. And I, you can create, you can develop, and you can build. And we've got somebody here saying, you know, very much that they're loving this talk, they want to progress their, you know, their fitness business further. Um, we've got somebody that said um, they're going to need uh, to buy new clothes too because they're, they're always in black because it's slimming. <laughs> um, and um, so... There's so much, and I think video is a beautiful method to really engage and speak out and reach to your to your audience. But for me, my tip would be be you. That's I think something that is so so important. Yeah, I mean, authenticity is this word that's been yeah. banded around a yeah. lot, right? And it's when I talk about authenticity to people. It's really important that you drop your barriers when it comes to planning, preparation, and uh, messaging, right? So you've got to be, if you want, truly believe in being authentic is the way for you, your personality to come out to find your ideal customers and for them to work with you. It's not a question of warts and all. It's a yeah. question of being in the moment completely relaxed without any other noise in your head right so if you talk on camera and you're frustrated by your inability to string words together you can't deliver a concise message but then you're completely against the idea of scripting then you're doomed right because script all scripting is is you putting down your authentic way of speaking in words on paper. Yes. And then just following that flow when you deliver to camera. It's yeah. just a way for you to brain dump, to go, yeah, yeah I like the sound of that. That's what yeah. I'm going to say, because that's yeah. me. And a lot of fitness professionals are really resistant to the idea of scripting, because scripting kind of gives this idea that it's going to be like this, and I'm going to read like this, and no one reads like that, and I'm being really unauthentic right that's yeah. not it that's no. not it right scripting is dumping what you want to say so at your essence at your whole it comes out the way you want to say it and you resonate with those words and it's easy for you to remember so that when you step in front of the camera you can say it just like that and people connect with the moment that you just spoken yeah. that's scripting it's not memorizing words that aren't your own it's not no. 
saying something that you don't feel is authentic or resonates with you or is no. a lie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's taking the time to plan, script and perfect. And that's part of, that should be part of how you teach. But most importantly, when you start a class that you teach, you know what you want to say straight away and you get people moving, right? Don't spend two or three minutes explaining what you're going to do. No one's listening anyway. They just want to move. They're there for the movement. Get there the for movement. the movement. And right. do you know? Do you know what? For me, uh, practice. You get better at it uh, with time. I, when I first started uh, going on camera, oh, you know, I I was uncomfortable with it. Um, but you get used to it. It gets it gets easier. But it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's sometimes not perfect. Just just be for me be I think be real and and get enjoyment from it and um really and and Donnie says here she uh says not to worry about messing up in front of uh your your class she did it apparently she messed up on Sunday morning and they just you know they all enjoyed it and they just kept going and I think that's something as well isn't it it's just like sometimes you don't get it completely right when you're in the studio when you're delivering sometimes you can't get you sometimes you can't get your words out it is it is the same and it doesn't matter whether it's in studio or on camera really does it you know absolutely and you know what when you're there are so many talented fitness professionals out there that do amazing things and create amazing moments in front of people whether it be virtual on demand or in classes right and it's so easy to be in that moment when you're coaching that when things go wrong, you recover from it because you're yeah. you're so you're so at ease. Your yeah. personality just comes out, you recover and you move on, right? Yeah. And there's like you said, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you find yourself in the position that you're worried and stressed about something and you're just willing to stick your finger in the air and just see how it goes. I beg you not to do that because yeah. more is at stake than you realize. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Don't just go, oh, well, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Yeah. No, that's that's not a professional talking, right? No. That's just taking a shortcut. Yeah. You it, And the fallout from that is on you, right? Yeah, it is. And I, you, you always, if you are a professional, you should always plan, you should always prepare, you should think about your delivery. You should do all of that. Um, sometimes it won't go right. But if you are coming from the right place, that's really uh, what needs needs to happen. And your clients, attendees will understand if it's coming from the right place. Right. We're going to wrap up in a moment. So what I'd love you to do, uh, Richard, I think you've got a program or something out that uh, might really work for some of some of my guys that are here that are listening, some of my instructors. So it'd be lovely if you could just tell me a little bit about that and what, what you're doing and what perhaps you can offer for them. Sure. So back when lockdown started, uh, April time, I began what has become the studio to screen strategy. So it's designed for fitness professionals who want to get online and start delivering on-demand solutions, live solutions, virtual fitness solutions. Doesn't matter what you teach, teaches the three, the three pillars of getting that in place. And that's perfecting your product. That's increasing the production value of your videos and also marketing, promotion and strategy and understanding where you should be spending your time to turn your virtual arm of your business into a profit-making arm for your business. So you're not burning yourself out, doing million live streams every day. So you really understand where you're going and what you need to do. Now, this course is, is in volume 2.0 at the moment, or version 2.0. <laughs> so this is going to be released probably in the next sort of month or so. Definitely. Okay. After Christmas. So right. if, you're finding, if your audience are procrastinating, they feel like they don't have things in place, they're worried they're not making enough advancements and that they're, they're just struggling with direction, then this could be the course and this could be the, the information that they need to help them on their way with that. And in the meantime, before that's ready, if you join the Facebook group, it's loaded with loads of free training, um, which will help you get up to speed on a lot of different stuff. Zoom tips, you know, strategy, marketing, promotional, understanding your audience, 
and the community there is great. If you have a question that's been answered before, a lot of people will step in and answer yeah. it if you can't get to it. Yeah. And the search function uh, will allow you to find a lot of the content if you can't already find it in the topics area of that Facebook group. So, so uh, join that in the meantime. Yeah, so um, Joanna, if you can just put the Facebook group back, uh, uh, link back into the comments box. So we've got it just uh, lower down on the feed. That would be absolutely fantastic. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time out this evening to join us, Richard. It has been absolutely um, great. Uh, it's uh, gone uh, gone into the comments box. Uh, and um, I'm sure a lot of our um, instructors have got so much so much from from this live stream tonight and i'm sure they'll be jumping onto your uh, onto your facebook group to gain some more information so um take care and um thank you ever so ever so much for joining us tonight thank you happy to help Thanks. good luck everyone yeah cheers thank you good night cheers so that's it really for the live stream today. I'm going to be back next next week, uh, next Monday, 7 p.m. And I'm going to be talking about uh, really the benefits of Bally Be Fit. I'm going to be talking about the benefits of the Bally Be Fit method. So I'll be sharing that with you next week. So please tell me so much in the comments box what you have taken away from tonight. It's so great to hear what feedback you know it's lovely to hear the feedback what you you know what you got from this so that we can really make sure that we are delivering what you need what you want to know so um please uh leave some more um comments there thank you to richard and also do remember i have my 21 um day boot camp Ballyby fit boot camp starting tomorrow Joanna's going to put the link in the comments box now. Um, it's nice and early. It's 7 a.m. tomorrow, and it is going to go through for 21 days through all sorts of, uh, we're going to go through muscle endurance, we're going to go through flexibility, we're going to go through breathing, we're going to go through posture, we're going to be doing low impact, we're going to be doing cardio, we're going to be doing hit, and we're going to really work on um, getting in shape. So, what I'd like you to do is sign up for that. Join me if you are an instructor. It is £27. If you're interested in becoming an instructor, it is £47. And if you can't make them, don't worry. We've got a replay for you and you will have a lifetime access to every single uh, boot camp, every single session uh, for the boot camp. So please join me for that as well and as always you can find out more uh, about what we do in this facebook group the ballet fitness room and you can obviously check out what courses and what we deliver at balletbefit.co.uk and yes joe um if you message we can really sort out about and talk about on demand uh, platforms as well and i'll chat with richard and we can uh, hook you up about that so um that is it from uh, me. Have an absolutely amazing week. Thank you for um, joining me on Hello Monday. I think it has been a really informative, really uh, interesting session and really helping us in these times really get what we do uh, out there to, to everybody so that we can offer support. So thank you ever so much. I will see you next week. Take care care and um we'll see you next week bye bye thanks for tuning in to hello monday be sure to visit the ballet fitness room to join the conversation access the show notes and discover our fantastic bonus content join us next time for more tips and techniques bye for now